This video gives a simple introductory tutorial for Google Service Fever. This week, Google open sourced a framework for writing distributed applications called Service Fever. Service Fever is an open source framework for building and deploying distributed applications. Service Fever allows you to write your application as a modular monolith and deploy it as a set of microservices. Let's have a quick look at its architecture to understand it better. Service Weaver consists of two core pieces. The first one is a set of programming libraries, which lets you write your application as a single modular binary using only native data structures and method calls. And the second one is a set of deployers, which lets you configure the runtime topology of your application and deploy it as a set of microservices, either locally or on the cloud of your choosing. So it is not just confined to Google Cloud. By decoupling the process of writing the application from runtime considerations, such as how the application is split into microservices, what data serialization formats are used, and how services are discovered. Service Weaver aims to improve distributed application development velocity and performance. But why Service Weaver? Well, there are a few reasons where it could be useful. But remember, it's in the very early stages and the use cases are still evolving. So, one of the few reasons is that it is Golang first right now, and the Go ecosystem didn't previously have a tool like this. Another reason could be that um, it has some better tooling for dealing with some real problem when we are doing the large Kubernetes deployment, such as upgrade versioning, testing, and by consolidating code maintenance into one place while allowing atomic deployments. Another benefit which we could foresee is that there are indeed some performance gains, especially in the distributed environment where the services make a lot of network calls uh, among each other. It also provides a significant performance boost when we are doing custom serialization mechanism in our code. Another advantage is that it is observability friendly and it hooks with open telemetry out of the box. So which allows you to get more in depth insight into the distributed call your code is making. Also, Kubernetes is the way to orchestrate the microservices these days and everything is geared towards services on the Kubernetes. So if you um, are building a lot of services on the Kubernetes and your organization is totally on the services and they're running on Kubernetes, I believe Service Weaver is going to be the tool of choice for the deployment. Okay, now this is a simple example of Google Service Weaver code. But before I delve into that, let me also give you a bit of a quick history. Um, that it very, seems very much similar to Corba. In 1991, the Standards Consortium OMG published the first version of something called as Corba. Corba was a standard that promised to bring distributed programming to the public. But it didn't really take off. Much of the criticism of Corba stems from poor implementation of the standards and not deficiencies of the standard itself. So distributed computing and programming notions are in play for a long time now. They're not really unique to cloud or the modern distributed arena. And Corba was one of the first effort to bring distributed computing under standardization, but it never took off because they were very high on standards, but very poor on implementations. And then over the time, there have been many efforts from different companies, from uh, Microsoft, from even from Google itself, to build a performant, a useful, a real world distributed computing framework, but it never took off. So it could be that service server is yet another attempt to bring some method to the madness of services, distributed services. Okay. Now this example, the top section shows some of the code 
which is from the go and how we can use a service weaver. So let's have a quick run through it. The core idea of service weaver is its modular monolith model. You write a single binary using only language native data structures and method calls. You organize your binary as a set of modules called components, which are native types in the programming language. For example, here is a simple application written in Go using Service Weaver. It consists of a main function at the bottom of this code and a single adder component. When it is time to run your application, Service Weaver allows you to run it anywhere on your local desktop environment or on your local rack of machines or in the cloud without any changes to your deployment code or application code. This level of portability is achieved by a clear separation of concerns built into Service Weaver framework. On one hand, we have the programming framework used for application development and on the other hand, we have various deployer implementation, one per deployment environment and this goes hand in hand with the Kubernetes. Okay. The thing to remember here is that Service Weaver is still in an early development stage and you can contribute at serviceweaver.dev. I hope this was useful. If you have any comments or feedback, please put them in the comments. Thank you.